What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. So today's video is our third edition of our Kvike series. Kvike! And today we're playing with a really cool blend of Kvike. This is called Scar. Unlike Voss and Hornendal and Fromgarden, this is more of a cleaner version of Kvike. And it's actually very similar to the effect you would get from uh, the very popular strain, Lutra. I have a dried flakes of the original culture of Scar, courtesy of a channel viewer. Thank you very much, Jesper, for sending those over so many months ago. Uh, I'm so excited to be able to continue to use them. The thing I'm really interested to play around with here is how is Scar different from the other strains that I've used in this series, and how does it stack up to the very famous Lutra? Is it cleaner? Is it less clean? Is it, you know, has have the ability to flocculate out better? We'll find out. So the goal of this brew is to create a nice hoppy lager. Like the rest of the beers in this Kvike series, I'm going to be using a smash recipe to highlight this yeast and also to highlight a specific hop that I have not used before. And in this case, we're going to be using Hallertau Blanc. Hallertau Blanc is a really cool hop, again, from the Huell Research Institute. Much like Nelson Sauvin produces a Sauvignon-style white wine character in the finished beer, I'm hoping Hallertau Blanc does something very similar, and it should be interesting to see how that manifests itself. Uh, supposedly, Hallertau Blanc has these really nice kind of gooseberry white wine characters, white grape characters, and supposedly a nice floral, herbal character that's derivative of Hallertau, uh, its parent. So it should be very interesting to see how that comes through. So up until this point, I've been doing pale ales and IPAs with my smash recipes with the Kvike series, but today we're going to take a hard left turn, and we're going to be doing a hoppy lager. Um, this is going to look like a pilsner in the recipe, but it's going to be decidedly hoppier than a pilsner, and obviously using these New World hops is going to have a very different character than, I don't know, like a German pilsner or a bo bohemian pilsner. I'm hoping to get a really nice, crispy, sessionable, but very enjoyable hoppy lager to quench your thirst in the midst of this summer heat. Nothing quite beats the summer heat like a nice crispy lager, and if it's a hoppy lager, it's even more enjoyable sometimes. You know what else really beats the heat effectively? A craft cocktail from today's sponsor, Shaker and Spoon. Shaker and Spoon is a craft cocktail subscription service that allows you to create really cool cocktails with specialty ingredients that are extremely hard to find anywhere else. Instead of searching endlessly for these ingredients, Shaker and Spoon will drop them on your front doorstep once a month. Each box is themed around a different kind of alcohol. So for example, right now I have the Bring on the Bourbon box. But there's also boxes for different kinds of liquors. If bourbon's not your thing, check out the Rye box, the Vodka box, the Tequila box. There's plenty others to choose from on their website. So I made this cocktail, the Kalasuhachi. It's a beautiful cocktail. Instructions were super easy to read. Honestly, everything was there. It took me less than three minutes to make this cocktail and film it at the same time. This is a one take deal. All right, so let's go in for flavor now. Mmm. Wow, that's actually really good. These specialty ingredients really make this what it is. I don't know where you're gonna find lemongrass, ginger, lemon syrup, or smoked orange bitters, but man, do they add a lot of dimension to this cocktail. I normally am an old-fashioned drinker, but um, this is something that I could really get behind, especially in the summer months. Check out Shaker and Spoon. There's a link in the description box. There's a link in the pinned comment. You'll get $20 off your box with the code APTBREW. Big thank you to them for helping sponsor this video. I am a real YouTuber now. Thank you for your attention, guys. Back to the main content. So now let's jump into our recipe. Like I said, smash beer. So this is a very simple recipe and it helps kind of make things a little bit easier. So first of all, we're going to be starting out with 12 pounds of Weyermann Floor Malted Bohemian Pilsner Malt. This is probably my favorite German Pilsner malt. Floor Malted Bohemian Pilsner Malt is actually a slightly under-modified version of regular Bohemian malt, uh, and that actually really adds a whole new level of flexibility to the malt. I highly recommend undertaking a step or decoction mash if you're using the floor malted version. There is a non-floor malted version of Bohemian Pills that's really good though, if you don't want to do that. That being said, it is probably my favorite Pilsner malt because it has such a deep flavor. It is a really, really nice grainy crisp flavor that um, I used to great success in my Czech slash Bohemian Pilsner I made last year. I did a decoction mash with that beer and it turned out Really, really good, actually. Um, so I'm hoping I get a very similar result here, just with a step mash instead of a decoction mash to make things a little bit easier. So 12 pounds of that should give me a OG somewhere around 1060 to get us a roughly 6% beer, hopefully by the end of this. 
For our hops, I'm using all Hallertau Blanc. Now my Hallertau Blanc is 9.9% alpha acid, and I'm gonna be using a whole bunch of it here. I'm really hoping to maximize the white wine, white grape kind of characteristic of this, but still retain a little bit of sweetness and a little bit of effectively juiciness um, in this hoppy lager. We also wanna have enough bitterness in there to really balance the beer out, so we are gonna still do some bittering additions. This, unlike my other smash beers, is going to be a 60 minute boil. We're gonna start out with a first wort hopping addition of half an ounce of Halletau Blanc. Secondly, we're gonna add half an ounce of Halletau Blanc at 60 minutes, one ounce of Halletau Blanc at 10 minutes, one ounce at zero minutes, and then this is the thing that's really gonna make this flavor come through, a full dry hopping addition of two ounces of Halletau Blanc happening at about two days, so basically the tail end of fermentation on this lager. Normally, I would provide you with a water profile for the water section, but in this case, I'm gonna kinda do things differently, and we're gonna be using straight up untreated spring water. I am using Poland spring water. That is pretty accessible for most people, especially if you live in the Northeast, so try to find yourself that if you wanna completely, perfectly copy this recipe, but otherwise, most spring water is gonna give you what you need. Spring water has trace minerals in it, but usually some level of bicarbonate to kinda help the mash pH keep itself in check. But above anything, lagers, especially pale lagers, really benefit from not having too many minerals in the brewing water at all. So I'm gonna experiment and see what happens if I use straight up untreated spring water. Uh, we will be treating for mash pH though and making sure our mash pH is in line with what we want. And I will be using eight gallons of spring water for this brew. For our yeast in this one, we're gonna be using SCAR. SCAR is technically a blend of Kvike strains. However, you can find a more refined version of it from escarpment labs in the form of their crispy yeast. Crispy is a combination of isolated strains from the SCAR blend that give you that pseudo lager character. So do check it out if you're curious about the actual yeast. That's the best place commercially to find it. For our mash, we're gonna be doing a step mash, very similar to the Belgian beers I've also been making if you've been following that series. It's going to be a two-step mash just to make sure that we get the full potential of this Bohemian Pilsner malt. So we're going to start out with a 45-minute rest at 148 Fahrenheit and we'll step up to a 30-minute rest at 158 Fahrenheit and then we'll finally finish off with a mash out as usual at 170 for 10 minutes. This hopefully will give us a reasonable final gravity that's not too high or too low hopefully around like 10, 12. I also wanna highlight a few other organizations for helping support this channel. First of all, Northern Brewer. You can find all the ingredients that you need to make this batch of beer, minus the yeast, on Northern Brewer's website. They also have some great gear and great people who are very willing to help you out, so check them out for that. And also Clawhammer Supply. Clawhammer Supply manufactures the system that I've been brewing on for basically the last two years or so now. And they are fantastic people, great customer service, and a great system that's available in both 120 and 240 volt options. Uh, I highly recommend checking them out or checking out their YouTube channel if you're curious about more. This should be a really fun brew. I'm also gonna be testing out my 240 volt element for the first time on this brew. We'll see how quickly we can rip through a brew day. And uh, it should be pretty fun to see what that's gonna be like. So without further ado, let's jump into the brew day. I added eight gallons of spring water to my Clawhammer Supply 240 volt system and started to heat it up to the mash temperature. I also milled my grain. Once the water reached my mash in temperature, I mashed into the grain bill, being sure to break up any clumps in the mash. Next, I started recirculation. I let the mash sit at 148 Fahrenheit for 45 minutes, but 10 minutes in, I took a pH reading. And I saw a higher than planned pH of 5.82, so I added some lactic acid. That brought it down to a much more reasonable pH, and at that point, I let it rest for another 45 minutes. Then I raised it up to the next step of 150 Fahrenheit for 30 minutes. Then I stepped up to the mash out step of 170 Fahrenheit, and I let it rest there for 15 minutes. At that point, I pulled out the grain basket, I set the controller to maintain a temperature just below boiling, about 208 Fahrenheit, and then I let it drain for another 15 minutes. At this time, I also added my first wort hops, which was half an ounce of Hallertau Blanc. <music> 
After the grain basket was finished draining, I set the controller to only about 50% power, which was more than enough to maintain a strong rolling boil. The 240 volt, 5500 watt element does not mess around, and it is extremely powerful, so maintain caution if you are not supervising the boil directly. Using my Anton Part Easy Dents, I saw a pre-boil gravity of 1049. Once I had reached the boil, I added my bittering addition of half an ounce of Hallertau Blanc. I let the boil continue for another 50 minutes, and then 10 minutes from the end, I added my 10 minute hop addition, which was one ounce of Hallertau Blanc. At this time, I also added some yeast nutrient and a Whirlflock tablet. And then 10 minutes later, I added my zero minute hop addition, which was one ounce of Hallertau Blanc. I killed the boil by starting to recirculate boiling wort through my chiller and my pump. After being sure the inside of the chiller and the pump are all sterilized, I then began to chill to 85 Fahrenheit and I took a OG sample using my Easy Dents and I saw an original gravity of 1058. This was a little bit short of my target OG, but definitely in the region that I was expecting. And then I aerated by splashing into my Spike CF5 and I pitched my yeast and left it to ferment. So first of all, for the fermentation of this beer, it is a relatively simple, straightforward beer to ferment. It is Kvike, it makes things a bit easier than your typical fermentation. There are still a few things to take into consideration though to make sure you have the best possible experience. The first thing is to be sure that you're giving your Kvike a few extra nutrients than usual. So it is a lower gravity fermentation still than what Kvike is really evolved around. So be sure you're adding a few extra grams of yeast nutrient during your boil or during your fermentation to keep it going and keep it healthy. This will ultimately speed up your fermentation process and keep your yeast from throwing off extra off flavors. Secondly, you wanna make sure you keep it nice and hot. This strain of Kvike is pretty notorious for fermenting clean all the way up to about 95 degrees Fahrenheit, so feel free to ramp that temperature up to that level to keep it going. However, I highly recommend just, if you pick a specific temperature that's nice and hot, keep it at that temperature. Try to avoid dropping the temperature until you're ready to cold crash if you wanna do that sort of thing. That will avoid having a stalling effect on the beer. I don't think it really happens all that much with Kvike, but any yeast is susceptible to that with temperature drops. You can ferment this a little bit colder if you want to, and that will definitely make it a cleaner flavor as well, um, but it will take a bit longer, so just keep that in mind. Secondly, if you want to ferment this under pressure, it's a great option for it. It will be something that is a clean beer, so it's definitely very good to suppress esters using pressure fermentation. It will also help lock in the hop aroma that you'll get from a dry hopping addition if you're doing it under pressure. What I will be doing for this particular beer is spunding it after I hit my dry hopping addition. So once I throw the dry hops in, as the beer is still actively fermenting, I will cap that up and put a spunding valve on it set to about 15 PSI. That will actually allow the beer to self-carbonate and will also keep all of those aromas locked into the beer and uh, make for a good, nice, hoppy lager drinking experience. And of course, there's also the option of fermenting with a classic lager yeast. For something like this, I would recommend Saf Lager W3470, which is a good dry fermenting lager strain. You want something that will not leave as much sweetness behind so you don't want to use something like Diamond Lager. You don't want to use a Munich Lager strain or a Bavarian Lager strain. What I would recommend is a Bohemian Lager strain, something like W3470 or Y Yeast 2124, something like L28 Urkel from Imperial Yeast is also a good option for this. You want it to be a little bit more attenuative so that you get a nice dry finish to help accentuate the hops and to make everything just kind of come together in a really nice, highly drinkable package, which is good for summer weather. You don't want heavy, thicker, sweeter beers for summer. You want drier, hoppier, crisper beers. And that's one way to get them. So in a nutshell, what I will be doing is pitching in my Scar Flakes. I'll be pitching these flakes at about 85 degrees Fahrenheit, heating the fermentation up to about 95 degrees Fahrenheit, letting it stay at 95 degrees Fahrenheit until it is finished. This will take probably about three to five days. Two days into the fermentation, I will have my dry hops, which is two ounces of Halletau Blanc. After that, I will add a spunding valve set to about 15 PSI to help the beer naturally carbonate, transfer into a keg. I will probably be adding cold side findings in line as it transfers into the keg. Then I will let it cold crash in the keg. I will carbonate further in the kegerator if required and then get this thing served. So I'll catch you guys in a few days. Yeah. 
So the fermentation on this beer went very quickly, unsurprisingly, it was about four day fermentation from start to finish, about 10, 12 final gravity and 79% apparent attenuation, which is pretty much what we expected. Uh, the beer was pretty much ready to drink by the time we actually kegged it, but um, I let it condition for another week or two in the keg. That actually made this beer so much better than it was straight off the fermenter. I highly recommend letting this thing sit and actually condition in the keg if you can because it's going to get so much better. So the beer is called Viking Pills, you know, calling back to the Norwegian roots of this yeast. It is 6.2% ABV and about 47 IBUs. Uh, a little bit higher than your typical Pilsner, but definitely on point for a hoppy lager. So for the appearance of the beer, it's a beautiful pale gold color. Uh, a little bit closer to yellow than gold, actually. It is not totally clear, but it is pretty clear. It's getting there. It's been lagering for about two weeks now. Um, it's actually had some time to really condition and uh, crisp up a little bit. It has a nice fluffy white head that does stick around for a long time. It has really good head retention, good lacing. Uh, overall, the appearance is quite pleasant. I do wish it was a bit clearer, but you know, it's gonna do that with time. So uh, I'm not really too concerned. The aroma is coming through beautifully. There is a really good crisp crackeriness in there, but also you get the grape, you get the white grape. And that doesn't smell like wine. It just smells like slightly grapey, I guess. Um, I mean, there's a little bit of a, a berry. Somewhere between a grape and a berry. It smells mostly like a white grape though. I would say it smells white, white grape juice, I think is really the closest descriptor I got for the aroma on top of that crackery pills character. Time to go in for mouthfeel. Yeah, it's getting there. Mm. So it has, it has a very, very lager-like mouthfeel. It's got a good level of carbonation. It's not over carbonated. Uh, it is a very on point mouthfeel for this. Nice light bodied, but just with enough kind of oomph behind it to let you know that it's more than just a light lager. This is probably my favorite Kvike beer I've made thus far. Um, I'm really more of a lager guy than I am an IPA guy, and that's one of the reasons why, but this has a bohemian pilsner feel to it. And I think the malt is a huge player in that. The mouth feels good. One of the things I really wanted to talk about in this video is the concept of crispness. So everyone likes to say that their lagers are crispy. It's like everyone's favorite lager descriptor, and it is effectively true, but only if you actually lager your beer. I am anticipating a lot of people are gonna ask the question of how can you say that this is crispy like a lager if you're not using lager yeast? Well, there's two ingredients. First of all, it is a clean fermenting yeast, something that leaves very little to nothing behind, and that is effectively what the SCAR has done here. But secondly, it is truly actually lagering your beer. This has been sitting at 33 degrees for about two weeks now, and that is how you get crispness. If I had not added findings to this beer, it would actually still definitely be hazy, but I have effectively sped up that lagering process, so now within two weeks, I have a very clean and actually crispy beer. There is no substitute for that time in conditioning to make a lager-like beer, even if it's made with an ale yeast like this one. So now let's go in for actual flavor. <laughs> I love this beer. It has gotten so good. <laughs> like I said, it's my favorite beer of the Kvike series so far. This has every ingredient of a Bohemian Pilsner except for the yeast and a non-traditional hop, but it works so good. The Halitau Blanc in this comes through with this beautiful gooseberry character. 
the white wine, white grape character is there, but it's not what I expected. I, it doesn't taste like wine. It doesn't taste like, you know, Sauvignon Blanc or whatever. It's not like Nelson Sauvin at all. It's more elegant. It's, um, it's like somebody took Hallettau, like regular German Hallettau Mittelfruer, and they added a whole layer of flavor on top of it. It has that beautiful herbal, grassy, and slightly floral notes of Hallertau. And then there's that berry character, that, that white grape character on top of it that is so good. And it shines in a beer like this. I think if I made this into an American Pale Ale like I did with my other ones, it would not have come through at all in the same way. And I probably would have been disappointed with it, but this is really one of the best ways I would see this hop being used is in a lager-like beer or a Pilsner-like beer. I would say it would also be very good in a Saison or maybe perhaps in a German wheat beer as well. But this is so far just blowing my mind. <laughs> it's so good. It's got that extra hop character too, so this is much more heavily hopped than a traditional Pilsner is. It's a lot more present than your typical Pilsner. That's why I'm calling it a hoppy lager and not a Pilsner, because there is a distinct um, goal there in making this as hoppy as possible, really, for, for its style. It's not quite an IPL, but I don't think it needs to be. I think this is exactly where this beer should be. The malt character in this is so, so good. That nice honey biscuit, kind of crackery bohemian Pilsner malt. Just enough of a residual sweetness in there to really make those hops shine. It also has an absolutely beautiful malt character to it that I am so happy with. It's no secret, I am a big fan of this malt. It is, like I said at the beginning of the video, probably my favorite malt for this kind of beer. My favorite German-style Pilsner malt. And then finally, the main ingredient of this, the yeast, Scar. I'm amazed at how clean this is. It really does feel like I fermented this with a bohemian lager yeast. There's just nothing in here that says that there's a yeast character. And in a way, it almost feels like there's a little bit of a sulfur note, very much like a traditional lager, almost like a bohemian lager yeast. It is deceptively good at this. I'm gonna brew with Lutra in the next couple weeks here, so it should be interesting to see how this stacks up to the Lutra beer uh, that I make, and I'll be making a German-style Pilsner, I think, for that beer. But so far, I've been, imp I've been very impressed. It drops very clear. It is, uh, I think there's a little bit of chill haze in that maybe at the beginning. It's very, very clear right now. You can see through it very easily. It's a little residual haze, but nothing too crazy to be you know, concerned about. But the flavor, is on point. This is actually really everything I ever would have wanted from a pseudo lager yeast. The fact that it was done in four days, I had a dry hopping addition in there and then I kegged it up and it got crisp within two weeks. I'm so happy about that. That just is a testament to how fast you can actually get things done with Kvike and still have a really good beer at the end of the day. This is something that I would happily put head to head with any other lager that I have made with a true lager yeast. I'm very happy with this recipe. And honestly, looking back at it, I don't think there's anything I would change to improve this. Everything here is lined up really, really well, and I cannot find anything I would do differently other than maybe making more beer because this is already almost gone. <laughs> anyway, guys, if you enjoyed the video, please go ahead, hit the like button, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and you like this kind of content, and comment down below with what your thoughts are. Have you used Scar? Have you used Crispy from Escarpment Labs? What do you think about using Kvike as a pseudo lager strain? and how have your experiences been if you have. If you want to support the channel, there's a number of great ways to do so. The best way I recommend doing so is by picking up a t-shirt like this one, which you can find from my Teespring store. That should be somewhere below the description box or to the right side of the video, as you can see. There's plenty of merchandise on there that should be interesting for you. I get about 30% of that sticker price. It does help support me quite a bit and you get something out of it yourself. So that's why I highly recommend checking it out. If you want to directly financially support the channel, please hit the super thanks button. It means a lot to me and it's a great way to do so very quickly and easily. I also have a Patreon. So my Patreon supporters are really doing huge things to help upgrade the production quality of this channel. You guys are making a big difference for me. So please check out that Patreon if you're curious about adding to that. So a big thank you to my supporters for that. I also have channel memberships for about two bucks a month. You get some perks to help you stand out from your peers in the comments section, so check that out. I also have an Amazon store where you can find some of my highly recommended brewing equipment. If it's available on Amazon, if I've used it and I stand behind it, it's all gonna be on that store. So check that out if you want some quick brewing recommendations. If you wanna follow me on more than just YouTube, I'm also available on Instagram as 
The Apartment Brewer. Check that out for some more frequent content updates and some ideas of what's going to be coming to the channel in the future. Anyway, guys, if you're still here, it does mean a lot to me that you watched all the way to the end. Only about 20 to 30 percent of you guys actually do that. So it means the world to me that you're still here. You guys are the real MVP. So this one is for you. So until the next one. Cheers. Mouthfeel time. That sounds weird. Yeah, that sounds really weird. But it's got Christmas to it. It's got Christmas, crisps, crisp in it, Christmas. It has crispness to it. <laughs> Why is that so hard to say? It has a really good crispness to it.